Hello dear artists, I have another foundation lesson I'd like to teach you today. So we've talked a lot in the last couple of months about all of these beautiful hues that we can make using primary yellow, primary magenta, and primary cyan. And we talk a lot about these gorgeous colors and we mix them all up and they're beautiful. But we've been talking about a lot of saturated hues. So what I wanted to show you today is the difference between something that's saturated and desaturated, or also we could say muted or grayed out. There's a couple different ways that we can do that. One thing you've seen me do is use a tight and buff when I want a lighter, slightly muted color. And that does work really well for a quick, simple way to dull your colors a little bit. But today I wanted to show you another method and that is mixing our opposites. You know the color wheel. We have our three primaries, yellow, cyan, and magenta. Anything that is opposite on the wheel we know is our complementary. All right, that's complementary with an E, not an I, because we are not complementing it on how beautiful it looks together. We are completing it. We are completing it because if you have yellow and purple, you also have cyan and magenta that made purple. So you have a complete of the color wheel by using the complementary color. Same thing here. If you have this beautiful green and this magenta, or you know, you could use red because there's many ways to make the color wheel, but in our modern theory, we use magenta here. So that means we have magenta and we have yellow and we have cyan that made that beautiful green. And that completes the balance of those colors. So that's what complementary colors are. And when you have them memorized and you say, I'm gonna try that yellow and a very teeny dab of that purple. And what am I gonna get? I'm gonna get a beautiful grayed out dulled color. Now we can go a couple different ways. I can do just a teeny bit of that purple and it's gonna be a lot more yellow, just like when we were mixing before. Or I can do the purple with just a teeny bit of yellow and I've got myself a nice dulled out purple. Sometimes you can't see because it's such a dark color so I'll add in white and now I've got this really gorgeous gray color. Same with these ones over here. And these are dulled out colors and they can be dulled as much or as little as you want. And this is how we get a whole range of different kinds of tones and shades by matching up the complementary color. I'm going to show you a few more mixes and a really fun thing to do when you're doing your mixes is keep track of what you've got right here on a sheet of paper and write it down as you go. So for example, I want to mix this orange. It's a really pretty orange. I can do it a couple different ways. Opposite of this, which this is the one that I'm using here, the lightest of the oranges. Its opposite was this really rich, almost indigo blue. Now, a teeny little dab, and we're gonna get ourselves this beautiful grayed out orange. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a dab. And it looks a little greenish. We're gonna have a whole array of different types of colors. And I think that's beautiful. We could add a little bit of white and see what happens next. So anyone who's loving muted colors, soft, and grayed and neutral colors. This is how we make our neutral colors. I'm gonna keep track of that. What did I just do? Light orange and dark blue. We can keep going down the um, list. I'm not gonna quit yet. We've got a few colors to mix. Um, let's try this beautiful pumpkin orange and mix it with the cyan. So. I've got just a dab of the cyan because we don't want too much. And we're gonna make this really, you can even add a little more of the orange. A really muted, nice, grayed out. And this can go so many different ways. Add the white, and then what do we have? Kind of a grayed out peach. Gosh, that's really pretty actually. Pretty powerful to be able to mix these colors like that. There we go. All right, now I'm gonna put medium orange with cyan. Those are our two there. And make sure my brush is very clean. I am mixing with my brush because I'm not using a lot of paint. If I was to be mixing with um, a lot more paint, then I would use my palette knife. Um, let's see, what's our next one on that list? Let's try this. Um, this was our almost red, not quite magenta. And then we get a little dab of this green. And that's a blue green. That almost makes this purple but it is a muted color. It's not a pure saturated color. And we add that, um, again, 
kind of surprised that it's turning out so um, purpley. Maybe that's got a lot of blue in it, and so that's why. Dark orange plus blue green. That's what we'll call that. And I'm not done yet. Actually, we haven't done magenta. So let's do magenta, and its opposite is the bright green. We're gonna move these over just a little bit. I want you to see what we're doing here. So its opposite was this color green, and now I'm making a nice muted again. That's a really nice dark rich red. And I'm gonna add in white so we can see another value of it. Okay, so those colors were magenta plus a medium green. All right, working our way down. Now we've got our dark purplish red here. And its opposite was just this light green here. A pretty color. We're gonna have to move our mixes up here. I'm, I'm not trying to make this like some perfect rhyme or reason, I'm just going right down the list. And we have ourselves another beautiful muted color, and I'm mixing that. Very similar to the last one we did. Now that purple, which we've already started playing with. Opposite of purple is yellow. Now our focus is on the purple, not the yellow, for this mix. So a little bit of yellow. We've got a very dark color again when we were talking about values. This is a great one to use if you need a dark value. That looks very black without actually being black. When you mix it with the white, we've got this gorgeous greenish purpley gray. Now it's one of my favorite combinations is to mix um, yellows and purples together. So we have purple plus yellow. Okay, and next on our list, I'm gonna move that over just a little, make sure that we're giving ourselves enough space. So I've got this dark blue, and its opposite is orange, which is just a tad bit of the orange and keep it more on the blue side. Kind of gives us this really lovely greenish olive color very dark and rich, but then when we add white, that's a really pretty color. Just a little bit of orange, and you've got this gorgeous muted. Do you see that? Such a gorgeous color. I, I really like, even though I'm like a purist about color, I really love these desaturated and muted colors. So we have a dark blue and orange. I'm gonna skip right on over to this blue-green, and then its opposite is this red, and I'm just using a little bit of the magenta, the, the slightly dark orange magenta, and that's got a really gorgeous dark, dark color. When we add in the white, we have this gorgeous, you know, when, you, when we do all of those blue-greens that we love so much, I mean, take a look at this how you can make that soft color, not quite aqua. Very much a rich, beautiful, muted color. See, we've desaturated that one. And that was blue, green, plus dark magenta. Let's do a few more here. And hopefully you have an idea of how to tone down your paints if you're feeling like they're just too overpowering with pure color. I'm gonna go ahead and do this green. And we'll mix just a tad bit of the magenta in, not too much. We'll get our probably get ourselves a nice olive going here. But there you've got a desaturated green, and I forgot to mix it first. Silly me. Oh, I'm putting it on here, but I'm gonna have to go back because Miss Perfect here missed something. <laughs> so it was just a dab of this. I want to be able to show both on my our muted green. That's a little more pure. There we go. So that was green plus magenta. And then our last one I'm gonna do will be this light green. Here we go. Let's switch this around for you. And since I don't want it to get all over my notebook, I'm just gonna put this down before I put my, and that light green's opposite was this, it's a little bit of this one, not too much. See that? Just a teeny little dab. Mm, that was still too much, so a lot more green because I want this to be more about green since we already did enough that was about the red. Pretty little earthy green color. And add our white. See how pretty that looks. 
What a great green. Very toned down and grayed out. And that one was light green and the violet. We'll just call it violet. It was the magenta with the blue. And sometimes I like to mix things up that weren't exactly a complimentary, just to see what would happen. You know, we were mixing that magenta with the light green, but what if we mixed that magenta with the darker green? We're gonna give ourselves a lot more. This one's really pretty too. And then, ooh yeah. There we go, Army OD green, an old Jeep color. <laughs> Oh, that's so cool. So you've got yourself ways of making browns and grays. And there's a place for that. That right next to a very saturated color will make that saturated color pop even more. And that's one of the good reasons why we want to do this. Let me go ahead and write that down. That was violet and green. What else would be a fun mix that we haven't even tried yet? Let's see. Uh, well, we kept doing purple with the yellow. What if we did purple and more of the orange? Again, we're gonna get a really pretty brownish color. We can mix it both ways, more purple or more orange. I like both. They both have their place, right? Well, let's do it this way. Let's give ourselves that color there with white. That would be light orange plus purple. But then our other one was purple plus light orange. And you've got yourself this like pretty grayed out purple that's got kind of a purple plus light orange. All right, I think you get the idea. I could continue mixing, but uh, I have carpal tunnel in my hand from way too many DIY house projects. So I'm gonna call it a day as far as giving you an idea of how to make muted colors. This is an important color lesson because we've worked so hard at mixing up the pure colors. It's really important to understand what you can do with still just three tubes, three colors, that's all. Those three, we had all the bright colors and then we had all of these gorgeous neutral colors. So especially for landscape painters or those who want to go for a softer, um, less saturated look, this is it. This is how you do it, folks. All right. Um, I'd like some feedback on this. Let's talk about this. Tell me if this is something you knew or if it's a surprise to you that you can get all of these colors with, again, just three colors of paint plus white. All right. Happy painting, folks. <music>